today's video we're going to make a slow stitched embroidered book cover. Hello again everyone, Sarah here from Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. Welcome to the channel, welcome back if you are regular watchers. So in 2023 we have been taking a look at stump work embroidery and we've been making little dragonflies see that. I know some of you are having a go at this project. If you're interested in this and you'd like to have a go at Little Dragonfly, we'll put the video for that up at the end of this video. So do go and check that out. We've got some coming in already for our Dragonfly gallery. So we will show your pieces um, in the next stunt work video. So that video was quite an intense video to make. There was loads of planning in it. It took quite a long time to film it and probably even longer for poor Jonathan to edit it. So it was a bit full on last week doing that. So I thought what we would do this week is slow things down a bit and take it a little bit easier. And we're going to do some slow stitching. So we have covered slow stitching before. We've got quite an in-depth video all about that. We made this little project here. Um, and we made this and I went through how I made this and I talk about what slow stitching is, um, what its influences are um, and how you can go about starting your own project. And we had a little look at this one up here as well. So there's loads of information about slow stitching. If you don't know what that is, do go and check that video out. I will put that one up in the corner here. If you can't see it in the corner here, I'll also put a link to it in the description below this video. So the idea of slow stitching is that it's a kind of a mindful practice that you're just really concentrating on the stitches and making the stitches and how the threads and how the fabric feels in your fingers. So it's not really about what you finish making, what about the, about the finished product, it's more about the process. But I know a lot of you do like to make something with your embroidery, otherwise you just have stacks of embroidery lying around and you don't know what to do with it. So it's quite nice to make it into something. So I thought, how can we combine that with the whole ethos of, of the ethos of slow stitching and that it's this mindful practice. So I'm going to show you how to make a really, really simple book cover with your slow stitching pieces. So I've got myself a little sketchbook that I am going to use. It's just a small one so that I can show you, but you can do this with any size of sketchbook you want or a notepad, anything that needs a cover really. So this is what I'm going to use to demonstrate on. Um, so let's have a look at the fabrics that I've chosen. So I've got a lovely selection of fabrics here and I have dyed these myself with some tea and some rusty nails. So if you're interested in how I made all these pieces of loveliness, like really, really amazing, I do have a whole video on this. It's on my other channel, Sarah Humphrey Creates. We will link that one as well. So you can go and check that one out either up the corner and and or down below as well. So do check that out because it was a really fun process just to make a plain fabric really, really interesting. So this is my selection of dyed fabrics with the tea and with the rusty nails. So I've got loads of those to choose from. I've also done some laces as well. Just little odds and ends and scraps, pieces that you might normally throw away, but you can save them turn them into beautiful things, perfect for slow stitching. So any little ends of ribbons that you might have lying around work really well. I've got some little small pieces of fabric. These were just sample pieces, but they've come out quite well. I've got lots of different texture in those as well. I've got some little scraps of fabric. So these are the kind of odds and ends off the calico. If I haven't used a whole piece of calico, I want to make a particular size. These all went in the pot as well. You don't have to have um, dyed fabrics for this. You can use anything you have, but I'm just going to show you um, with these ones that I have. But if you've just got scraps of fabric left over, there's a little bit of uh, linen there look, that I've dyed. All of this kind of fabric is really great for slow stitching because we're going to layer it and cut it up and stitch over it. So it doesn't matter if it's only a little bit of an end. It's a nice bit of lace there. And then the other thing I did was these beautiful silk ribbons here, all sorts of different thicknesses. And they've come out really, really, really beautiful. I would like to do something just with the silk ribbon, actually, but I might incorporate a bit in this project. I've got an idea of how I can use it. And I did promise in the video that I made about making all this fabric that I would actually make something with it rather than just stack it up and store it. So this is what I'm going to do today. So I've got some fabrics. What I need is something to stitch with. So I pulled out some of my threads. 
And these ones are also hand dyed. They do not need to be hand dyed. Anything that you've got in your stash that you want to use is absolutely fine. But I just thought I'd keep that theme going a little bit. Um, so these are ones that I've done here. These are red cabbage and we've got poppy petals in here. We've got onion skins is the yellow. We've got some dandelions, which is the pale one as well. So I'm going to pull a few of those out to complement it. I think I want to bring another colour into it. That's just nice to add a little bit of a colour to it. So maybe one of the purples. I'll have a look and see. So I'm just going to use those to stitch with. And then the other thing that I found um, that I'd forgotten I'd got actually um, and really would like to use because they're really beautiful is these little kind of buttons. They say buttons but they do have little holes in them so I'm not too sure how we would sew them on as a button but they were really lovely um, little embellishments if you like and I thought they would go really nice with this fabric. Um, I don't know where I got them if anyone <laughs> where did you get those are amazing I can't remember if I do remember I'll put a link um, below in the description below the video for those but I thought they would go really nicely so it'd be nice to get those on as well so I'm just going to limit these supplies to that and just choose some fabrics and some threads to make my book cover with. So just before I choose some fabrics I'm just going to show you the principle of making a book cover because they're super super easy. So I've just got a couple of pieces of fabric here. I've got a dark one for the inside and a lighter one for the outside. So this is the side that we're going to do the slow stitching on here. But just so you can see what the process is. So you need a bit of fabric that is just a bit bigger than your book when you open it out and quite a bit longer at the end. So just a little extra um, on the top and the bottom. So I've got about a centimetre there. And then that end needs to fold over there. It will actually go inside the cover like that. That end will go over there like that. And that's your book cover. It's going to be simple as that. And then all we're going to do is just sew down those pieces there, there and there, and the book will slide into the book cover. So that's the principle. So now what we're going to do is the slow stitching on the actual cover. Now I've actually chosen quite a contrasting colour for my inside of my book. You're going to see this, so you'll see the stitches that are coming through from the front on the back, but that kind of makes its own pattern um, as well, which can be quite nice. So I'm not worried about making a lining or covering any of that up. And I just wanted a really nice contrasting colour. So this is just a printed fabric that I found. This was a dress that I made. So I'm going to use that for the inside. And then what I want for the other side, now this piece is actually um, an onion skin dyed piece of fabric, but I may not actually use that. I may just go straight onto here. Your um, textures will build up as you layer your fabric, so it will become quite thick anyway. You don't want too much fabric, especially as this is quite a small book. But what I'm going to look for in my materials is a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest. So I've got these nice ones here with some beads on. That will be really lovely. Maybe some lace as well. Just thinking because they're all similar colour because they were all dyed in the same pot. So I want something that's going to stand out. We've got some quite nice dark grey bits here. Those ones will stand out nicely. I've got some fabric that's been embroidered on already with some sequins. Might go quite nicely with the buttons. So I'm kind of looking for textures. I'm looking for different colours. I'm looking for different fabrics um, and we can put those together to make a nice cover. So what I'm going to do is pull a few of those out now, have a little play, um, just have a little arrangement and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I've done and explain um, why I've chosen what I've chosen. So I only spent about five minutes choosing my materials. You can spend as long as you like. This is the really fun part, the feel of the fabrics and in your fingers and playing around and moving stuff and seeing what you um, what you like. Um, so this is what I have chosen. So here's my material. So there's that backing fabric that I showed you earlier. So don't forget the pattern goes down. That is the other side of the book cover. And then I've layered these fabrics on top. So I'm just going to move those out of the way for a second. So I've just made sure I've put a whole layer over that backing fabric. So I've got at least two layers of fabric all the way through. Some areas I've got a lot more than that. And I've just started to play with these different textures. So I wanted something a little bit darker against this colour. I haven't got two pieces that colour next to each other so they blend. I've got something different. So I've got the embroidered one there with the dark grey on it. It goes dark grey by the way because that's when the nails react with the T. So that's when you get a beautiful grey colour. So I've got a bit of the grey in there. Then I've got a bit of patterned and embroidered lace edging there. I've got some actual lace under here so you can see through the layers as well. Here's just a purely plain tea dyed one underneath. So you can sort of see how I'm layering these up. 
so that I can see each piece and that each piece says something different if you like. There's a bit of a texture on this one here. Um, I've got just a little bit of lace there that's just cut off the end. That just makes a nice feature, feature piece. Um, I've got a pink one that I actually dyed here. So this has got the nails on it. This is what you can see here. This is the nails and it's just got a nice pink colour. I thought that might be nice to bring my threads in to match that. A little bit of calico there that's got some of the nail nail dye on it as well. A little bit of old ribbon lace. It's got a hole in it but we're not worried about that because we're going to darn over that. Some slow stitching mending on it as well. So you can see how I've just layered those up there. There are infinite combinations especially with the amount of fabric that I've got on the table. So you cannot get this wrong. Just have a play until you find something that's visually pleasing to you and that is fine. You can stop. You can make a hundred of these if you want to. Um, there's no right or wrong. So just have fun with this stage and I'll just show you the threads that I've picked. So I've kind of picked some colours that are in it. So I've picked um, a purpley pink one to go with this here. This is a red cabbage dye and a bit of lemon juice to make it go more pink. It's a bit variegated as well. So hopefully that'll do something interesting when I stitch with it. So that's just going to stand out a little bit against my fabrics. I've got this one as well, which is also a red cabbage dye. This has got some iron in it. So again, iron from those rusty nails and it changes the colour of the die. So it's just the same die pot but you just add something different and it modifies it. So this has got a really nice sort of bluey kind of purpley colour. I'm not really sure what colour you'd call that. And then I've just got a cream one. This is a dandelion die in there if I just want to contrast to those ones. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Three colours of thread. Um, I'm going to do all my stitching in those. So one more thing to mention with this is if you are making a book cover think about how it goes around the book. So if you remember I put that in the middle and this is going to fold over. So this section here will actually be on the inside of the book like so. Be the way around that will be the inside and the same here. That will be the inside bit. So this bit here will actually be the cover here. So this is going to be the front of my cover is going to be about here. So if you're planning and particularly designed to go on the front of the book, you need to think about that because I'm going to put these on, which is why I'm going to place them here somewhere. I haven't quite decided where. And I'm not going to put them there because this isn't the front of the book. This is the front of the book here. So just one thing to be aware of when you're placing your pieces in your elements. So I'm just going to clear away everything that I'm not using. So I've just got my threads and my fabrics in front of me and I'm going to start stitching. So the first thing that you want to do with all these pieces of fabric is stick them together. <laughs> Not literally stick them together, but we want to stabilise them so they don't move. So I'm going to move these little pieces because they're going to go on at the end. And I'm just going to pin it all together so it's just one piece of fabric. So just try and make sure you catch every bit of fabric that there is. So I've got the background there, that layer there and that little bit of lace there. Just to hold the whole thing in place while we get some stitches in. So don't worry too much about this. Just get some pins in. Try and hold everything down so that you can handle it like a piece of fabric. Now you'll notice there's no ring frame in sight. It's really nice to do slow stitching in your hand. It does slow you down a bit. You can feel the fabrics that you're working with. Often when you use a ring frame you're a bit detached from the materials that you're using. It's don't touch the fabric, keep it nice and tidy, nice and tight and you sort of lose a little bit connection sometimes with that. So slow stitching is really lovely just to do in your hand. Obviously if you do have some mobility issues with your hand using a frame is absolutely fine. This would go really well on a stretcher bar. You can get the right size frame for your piece of fabric. So if you need to use one please do use one. So you can see there I can hold that up look and it all stays together in one piece which is going to make it much easier to stitch on. So that's the inside of my book cover. That's the outside. I'm going to stitch it all from the top. I've got some thread and I'm going to use that kind of bluey colour, purpley, not purple, bluey colour thread. Um, so you hopefully you can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to run, uh, work a running stitch throughout this whole piece. And if I just grab this piece that we made in the previous video here, you can see this running stitch all the way around. I'm not going any particular order. I'm just sewing over the pieces and sewing these pieces together. Go right through the middle of some of these just wherever the stitches need to be. Once it's all stitched together then we can think about adding some decorative stitches. So I'm just going to start, doesn't matter where I start anywhere, I'm going to start right at the end here. 
put a knot in the end of my thread and I've gone between my fabrics so that knot's inside like so and then I'm just going to work this running stitch this doesn't have to be beautiful just enjoy the feel of the stitching the pattern that it makes and just straight across the middle just get these pieces fastened first I would say don't again worry too much about the colours I know that they all go with each other what I tend to do with my pins is just move them when I get to one I've picked them so that they go with each other so I don't need to worry about is it going to match because I've already done that bit and then when I get to another piece here I'm just going to go straight over onto that piece as well there's no pattern to follow no worrying about the edges just get some stitches in there just get it all sewn down and what you can do is change direction you don't just have to have lines all the way across so when I get to the end of this piece here I'm going to actually come down going to turn it round because that's easier to sew and I'm just going to go down here straight to the bottom so you don't have to do straight lines across everything just think about where do I need to go to fasten these bits of fabric down and if you stitch them at the edge that's the best place to make sure they're fastened go straight off the end there like that these need to hold together as well that's the back and the front piece there so just all the way to the bottom of that And go off the bottom in fact with that so you can see I've come along here and I've come down here so I think what I might do now is maybe with the same color I might come across here and up here that might make two nice patterns in it and maybe one over here as well and then I'm going to change color so I'm just going to work the whole piece like that for now be quite spontaneous with where I put my running stitches just going to stick to running stitches now while I get the whole thing together as a piece of fabric then I can think about decorative stitches afterwards so I'm going to do that now and then we will have a look at what else we can put on it So just a couple of things to point out while you're doing this is when you've got several layers like I have here so I've got the backing I've got the pink I've got this one here and the calico on top you want to make sure you get your stitches all the way through so make sure you point the needle down into the fabric you can see I'm just using my hand to manipulate it to make sure that I've picked up the fabric on the back I'll just turn that over so you can see so there's my needle come through on the back there and that just makes sure you've caught all your layers in and it's all being stitched down together and because it's not in a frame we can just manipulate it to go through so just something to be aware of if you've got lots of layers Something else you need to do as well is to make sure that you go all the way around the edge because we're not going to put a lining on this or finish it off properly or anything like that we're just going to leave these raw edges as they are they're really interesting like that so do just make sure you stitch around all the edges so that this fabric's not flapping about so you don't have to go round in one movement you can do it in different colors and at different times and different stitches but just make sure there is some stitching around the edge of the whole thing and that it's all held together you can take the pins out as you get to them so just coming along the bottom now and then i just want to show you how to finish a thread off so let's just get back to that piece of lace the center there go 
going to go down through that piece of lace to the back of the fabric. Just turn your fabric over and then I'm just going to do two little stitches over each other to so pick up a bit of the fabric. Do the same again, you can pick up a couple of layers if you want to. Do a third one underneath those and then take your needle through that loop, pull it tight and then you can just cut your thread off close to your fabric. So I'm having a good time. <laughs> I hope you are too watching this and it's fine to have a little go at a book cover. So I've just put enough stitches in now to be able to take all the pins out. So it's a one piece of fabric. It feels really lovely. I wish you could wish you could feel it too. So um, there are still a couple of little bits that aren't quite sewn down. So I'm going to show you what we can do with those in a minute. But this is a good opportunity to just test it on your actual book. So the thing to do is to turn it over. Just fold it in half, note where the middle is, put the middle of your book in the middle of your fabric, just open the book out, just fold the ends in there, fold the end in there, shut the book and then you can see what your book cover is going to look like. So this is the front and this is the back if you decide you like the back better than the front. Just turn it around now that's the front and that's the back so if you just think oh actually i prefer that um you can just turn it around so really nice and easy to do if you if you like the back better than the front um this is also the time if you want to add anything else you think oh this is a front it might be nice with something up here or i want to add something down here and just um to mention as well if you're going to put any um, hard things on here, any embellishments, any beads, any sequins, don't put them where the book's going to, cover's going to fold obviously because they won't go around corners. So that's just something to bear in mind. If you put like shisha mirrors on it for example, don't put shisha mirror there because <laughs> it won't fit around the book. So just something to be aware of. So I'm just going to leave it at that because I want to show you some extra stitches. So I've got some pink thread here. So there's this little bit here that needs catching down really. Anything like this is vulnerable, especially with a bit of fabric that's not finished off. So although we're being very free with our stitching, we still want to stitch it well, I think, and make sure that it's not going to fall apart. So I'm going to just finish that little bit there. So I've got a pink thread here. And just to start it, I'm going to sneak my needle underneath these fabrics here, pick up a bit of that underneath and come up right in that corner there and that will just hide the end of that thread and that knot underneath there like so and I've gone through some of the fabric as well and I'm just going to do a different stitch on it now so you can do whatever stitches you like on this if you've got a good knowledge of different embroidery stitches then you can have a really good time experimenting and playing with those stitches so I'm just going to do a little buttonhole just to catch this edge down so I've come up in the corner down in the fabric and because I'm sewing it in my hand, I can do this in one movement. If you were doing it on a frame, you would go down to the back and you would come back up to the front. Now I can do that in one movement. I can go down, I can bend that fabric and the needle comes through. So you can actually stitch in a different way to how you would if you were in a hoop. Go following the shape of that, I'm not worried about it being a straight line. Just going to go around that nice curve. And you can see how that's fastening that edge down, just securing it in place. The thread I am using, by the way, is a cotton abroder. It's quite a fine one. I think it might be 16. It's really lovely thread to use. It doesn't come up. It's not like stranded. You can't take the strands apart. You just use it as it is. But it's a really lovely thread to use. And I've got that in a number seven crawl needle. You can use whatever thread you like, whatever you've got in your stash is fine. 
do pick them out first though because I think otherwise there's too much choice and you're just supposed to be relaxing and mindful you can get too stressed because you think oh there's too much going on so I'm just going to stop it there I could go all the way around to that one but I'm just going to stop it there to finish it just through to the back it's two little stitches one two third one in the opposite direction underneath just take the needle through the loop and I can cut that off So there, that's fastened down nice and tightly. There's a little bit there as well, so I'll probably come back and do that. Just want to show you this bit though, because I've gone along here. So I mentioned you need to go all the way around the edge with this because we're not going to finish the edge. We're not going to bind it or line it or anything like that with it. So this is going to be your finished edge. So make sure you go quite close with stitching all the way around. and come across the middle as well here, which means that bit's a little bit loose still there. So I think I'm going to fasten that one down. So I'm just going to sneak the needle underneath there through some of that fabric to catch it in. And then I'm just going to do one of my favourite stitches on slow stitching is just to sort of, I don't even know what you'd call it really. It's kind of like a, like a running stitch but across rather than in a row. So I'm just going to come up in that fabric in that one there and just take a little sideways stitch like over sewing really it's quite a crude one but i think it's really nice just to hold these edges down you can still see these nice edges on them i don't want to cover them up with a buttonhole stitch necessarily that's got quite a beautiful edge on it so i'm just over sewing and just make sure you're nice and relaxed when you do this if you pull this too tight the whole thing will screw up into a big stressful mess and it's not supposed to be stressful it's supposed to be nice and relaxing and that's what's nice about doing it in your hand is you can feel the tension when you actually stitch it in your hand where sometimes in a frame you you don't get that so nice and relaxed for this just going to go all the way to the bottom Finish that off on the back. There we go. So as I said, you can just keep going with this. There's lots more stitching you could do on it. You could do some um, eyelets on there. You could do some French knot. You could do some more buttonhole. That would probably need catching down as well. So just keep on stitching until you just feel that it's finished. Um, the great thing about it is it doesn't have an end. <laughs> you can choose where that end is. You decide when it's finished. So there's no pressure to carry on for hours if you don't want to, or you can just stop now if you do. So I want to show you how to get this made up. So I'm actually going to stop there. I probably would do some more stitching in it, but I want to show you how to make that into the book cover. So I'm just going to add on my embellishments before we sew it up because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get through to the back and I've decided I'm just going to put all three of these guys on together. I've had them for ages and I just think they look really nice as a trio. It would be a shame to split them up. So I'm just going to mark where I am going to sew them on. So giraffe is going to be there. Let's put it that way so I know that he meets the middle of that pen. Pin. A bit too relaxed now. My little man's going to come to there and the snake's going to fit right in line with that there. So I'm just going to mark on where they're going to go and take that off the book. So you can sew on any embellishments you like. You probably haven't got um, a handy giraffe to, to sew on. Um, but you could sew beads on, you could sew um, broken jewellery. That's a really great one. If you've got an odd earring, now is the time to, <laughs> to use it. That would look wonderful on something like this. A bit of sparkle and shimmer on there. So anything that you want to sew on that you can put a hole in. So he's got two holes down here, which is a slightly strange place. So I'm just going to sew him on. I might put one just around his neck to secure him. You do want to make sure these things aren't going to fall off. You know, it does feel we're doing quite freestyle, as I said, but still make sure that you do it well. So I'm just going to put one up here because 
it's not going to last very long. So turn that over, I think. Just weave that under the back. Try not to have any really long stitches on the back because they will just break and then the thing will fall off the front. So you can just go between the layers of fabric if you want to as well. And that will just hide that thread. It's about the right place. In fact, we're going to go over his ear and it doesn't look like he's being strangled. I'm going to do a couple of stitches. I want him to be really secure. He's quite heavy. We've got so many different textures going on here. Just think about how they need to be held down. Do you need a couple of extra stitches? So that's him in place. I'm going to sew the little man on and I'm going to sew the snake on and then we're going to fit it around the book. So I've got my little embellishments sewn on there. Happy with those. So let's um, make this into the actual cover. So I put it around my book and I just open it up. You want to make sure the distance here is the same as it is here. And then I'm just going to put a pin in those two bits of fabric. So you need to have enough fabric outside your book because we're going to sew down there. So if your fabric's the same width height as the book, then you're not going to think to sew. So just double check that that's the case. So a little pin each side there. I can do this one as well while I'm here. Pull it nice and tightly around there. Just hold it, make sure it covers nicely. Let's pin that side as well. And then that side there. And then we can sew all of those together. And then to get the book out, you can just fold it back on itself and that will come straight out like that. Okay, so we need a thread. It doesn't matter what colour thread. We've got a pink one here. And we're just going to do a running stitch again, but we're going to do quite a small one now because we want this to stay shut. So which side shall I do it on? Let's do it here. So we're just going to over sew a couple of times. Make this secure. And then we're just going to do that little running stitch, but just a small one this time. Quite close together. Because we want this to hold the cover in place. Make sure again that you're going through all of those layers of fabric. If you want to, you could do a back stitch here. I'm just going to move that pin so it's a bit out of the way. And when you get to the end, just going to pick up a little bit of that lining. And that and just over sew that there. This bit wants to be secure. Anything like this can with with wear and using the book could come undone quite easily. So just a few stitches over the end there. Take it back through the loop. And you can just hide the end inside there. Take it through there between the stitches. Just cut your thread off. You can take your pin out. And that's one side. Done. So I'm going to do that on all four corners and then we'll just add a few finishing touches. Okay, so I've finished stitching down here. So just running stitch down all of these four corners, finish securely so that these, this doesn't come undone here. I've added a couple of little ties on as well. So just got a piece of that calico that was dyed in the tee there. And I've just sewn it on in the middle on either side. So we've got two little ties. So let's put the book back in. Make sure it's the right way up. Hopefully it will fit. And then just bend it back on itself to get the other side in. Like so. There we go. That's in nice and tightly. And I've just done one last thing. Sewn a little piece of that beautiful ribbon there. That nice um, silk ribbon that I dyed. Used a piece of that for a little bookmark down the middle. Just put a knot in the end. You could put a bead on the end of that. All sorts of things. Fold it shut. Tie up my little ties. That 
that's my slow stitched book cover finished. So I hope you've enjoyed that little slow stitching project and inspired to have a go at one yourself. If you'd like to have a go at the dragonfly I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you can see that video up here. I will be showing those in another stump work video in the future. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, do give it a thumbs up and so more people will get to see it and I'll see you next time.